Mm -hmm. Uh, Jacoby Brissett is the starting quarterback at this time. That didn't scare me that much, to be honest. I'm like, okay, well, whatever. He's the starting quarterback at this time. The line about Jacoby Brissett being most pro-ready, I did not love hearing from Gerard Mayo, if I'm being honest. I didn't love that. He's pro-ready. Is it fair to say Drake May isn't pro-ready? Like, like that's kind of how I read into that one, which I, I did not love that answer from Gerard Mayo. We'll play you more from Mayo coming up, uh, who I think left the door open, ajar, for Drake May to start. Might be a high bar, uh, but we can get to that coming up. What were your takeaways from Gerard Mayo, that answer specifically? Jacoby's our starting QB. He's the most pro-ready guy we have. That answer doesn't bother me at all, given where they are in the calendar. I wouldn't expect... <laughs> most rookie quarterbacks to be pro ready before training camp has started so much no. what you're gonna no pro ready that doesn't mean like to dominate that just means are you ready for the pros he not pro ready to me is a scary answer if that's what he's saying about Drake i'm May. coming from the position of the the expectations for drake may's how polished his game was going to be were so low coming out of the draft because of everybody talking about the mess of his footwork and how raw he was and that it's basically like he, the beginning stages of Josh Allen that when I hear he's not ready by training camp, he's not the most pro-ready guy on the roster, I'm like, yeah, of course not. I'm still operating from that place, and that might be just it, the bluster that comes out of the whole draft media process of people saying, well, this guy's been one of the top two picks for over a year now, so we have to find something else to say about him. I, that's totally understandably what could be going on. At the same time, we're sitting here. It's not even August yet. I believe that he's probably not pro-ready compared to Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. And I still think that's okay. And it doesn't mean that it's impossible for him to even start week one. I just look, I, I'm the one who thinks he's going to start week one. Yeah, I'm I, saying that I that, I that love can that still answer. be true. It, no, it can be. I he just, has never gone through a look, training camp. Look, I'm not telling you he's not going to start week one. I, I've said he's going to start week one. I think he will. I just didn't like that answer. Let me tell you the other thing that I was thinking, because uh, it, since Gerard Mayo, if you listen to the whole press conference, gave another little name drop to another organization, I think it's very much towing the line of the new Green Bay Packers in Foxborough of not setting the expectation that he's yeah. going to start. We'll play that coming up. Uh, so when it comes to Gerard Mayo, uh, I don't like him saying that uh, Jacoby Brissett is pro-ready because the implication is Drake May is not. And it's one thing for Mel Kuyper or like some other draft dork to break it down and say this guy's not pro-ready. It's another for the head coach to say it. And that's not exactly what he said, but if I'm reading between the lines, I, I think he's implying that. So I did not love that answer. Uh, I don't know how you read it, Arkan, but that that I didn't love. Yeah, I didn't love it either. I was expecting him to say it. I don't think I, did, I would have been surprised if he had done a total 180 on that since he's been pretty consistent with it so far. And then he followed it up with, well, you know, Joe Milton and Bailey Zappi, those guys, everybody's getting a chance here. Everyone's getting a shot, which we know that's not true. We know that reps aren't going to go that way, and we know it's not going to be equal through the four of them. So I thought that was a little, I don't want to say Weasley, but definitely the type of answer where you're just like, okay, Gerard, like, you know, all right, everyone's, everyone's getting a chance, sure. We know it's between these two guys. I agree with you that I don't think he needs to be ready to dominate. If he doesn't look like he can step on a field and not – hurt himself you know what I mean like if that if it's to the point where they think it's going to be a liability for the team and for him to go out and play and that's why they're sticking with Brissett I don't like that but I also feel like there's time to work that out all right let's get to the May portion of the the Q&A he was asked about the quarterback battle he wasn't asked specifically about Brissett that's how he answered it uh, Jacoby's our starter right now that part didn't bother me it's about competition didn't bother me he's the most pro ready I, I didn't love he had to add that on to the end Here's the exchange, though, on Drake May. These two have referenced it. Let's hear that. So you competition. Um, is there a world in which you can envision Drake May competing well enough to overtake and, and be a three-day star? Or is his... Look, if, he, if, if Drake, and this goes to any position, if he comes out here and he lights it up, and once again, it goes back to the quality of reps, it could absolutely happen. Like, I sit here and tell you, like, coming out of the spring, Jacoby – looks like the starting quarterback now with that being said he'll have competition there's competition like let's not forget about even joe milton and let's not forget about zappy all those guys will have opportunities to go out there and be the starting quarterback in week one not at all like i think this is i mean you've seen that work in the past right you look at you know, other quarterbacks, the Green Bay quarterbacks, right, where they had a lot of time to – I don't know if I was allowed to say his name. Well, I got it. <laughs> but uh, you look at those situations and, and, you know, they were able to sit back. There have also been situations where a guy comes right in right now and he balls out, you know. And, you know, we'll see what happens when we get out here on the field. What 
what's the standard for you guys? That, you know, as you're evaluating him, is it just once he's ready, he's ready, or he has to be better than Jacoby? He, he, he has to be at a certain spot. What's the what are you guys watching? To, to, to me, to me, it goes back to the same word, and it's competition. It's not about everyone else. It's about does this guy go out there and perform better than Jacoby, no matter who we're talking about? And so, I mean, that's the way that's the way I kind of see it. Okay, I, I think people have kind of misunderstood that last answer from Mayo. Like, oh, it's just it's just about Drake May. It's not about anybody else. I've seen that written today. That's not what he said at all. Mm -hmm. He said you just have to outperform Jacoby Brissett. And so if he outperforms Jacoby Brissett, he's going to get the job, which I think is the real answer from uh, uh, Gerard Mayo earlier today. When he says he has to go out there and light it up, and he compares him without saying the name to C.J. Stroud, I think, um, you know, some guys come in, they ball out right away. Ball out, light it up. That's a high bar. But he also says it's not about anybody else. We're going to give the job to the best guy. He's got to be better, perform better than Jacoby Brissett. That, to me, is a manageable bar. That's one he can reach. I don't know what light it up, balling out looks like for Gerard Mayo. Uh, but if it's just about beating Jacoby Brissett, this guy's going to do that. He's going to start week one. I think that's possible. Like, I don't, I still don't think it's likely, but I think it's more because of. You don't think it's likely he'll start week one, or you don't think it's likely he'll outperform Brissett? Oh, I don't think it's likely he'll start week one. Even if he's outperforming Jacoby Brissett, I think it's possible that he, they gave you a little hint there with the Green Bay Packers line that, hey, and, and Gerard Mayo has said a lot more of this. It does work both ways. There are guys who benefit from sitting or at least appear like through the success of their career. Aaron Rodgers had benefited from sitting. And then there were other guys who played right away, like C.J. Stroud, who you can point to and say, see, he didn't need to sit at all. He was great right away. And if he sat, you would have just been wasting his efforts through that rookie season and you wouldn't be in the playoffs. Like, it, it is an individual basis thing. But since he mentioned the Packers and there's a contingency of New England right now of the Patriots front office who chose this guy or we're told to chose this guy, and they're from the Packers. It makes me think that there's some directive from higher up of tread carefully with this kid. Maybe again, that's how we do this. Again, that's how we see the best well, path. But for not the really. Quarterback but is. not really because the highest drafted quarterback that Elliott Wolf was ever a part of drafting and playing was uh, Baker Mayfield, who started almost right away in his rookie years. So you know, right? But he didn't say the Cleveland Browns. He didn't. And he didn't say where no, Van Pelt's experience is. No, but I'm just saying. I mean he's that's part of what wolf's track record is and you know right they, but i'm reading into what gerard Mayo said Packers, today yeah, I mean, yeah but he also said, didn't say this is what the browns he also do, said this some guys come experience. in and play great right away i'm saying what what messaging is he getting because if you think that gerard mayo is in full control of when he when his quarterback plays oh, and choosing it okay so then who is in control of that craft and who is craft talking to I have no idea, but I, do you think he's talking to Wolf? I don't know. Yeah, I think he's probably talking to people in the front office who selected this kid and trying to get the most information on it. Yeah, I think uh, ownership will have a say in who starts, but go ahead. Um, I don't know about that. I mean, I think that there's they'll have as much say as anybody. I don't know that they're going to be uh, in it in a week-to-week -week basis like that. I mean, that seems like a little... But well, the we're talking about the overall perspective manager. on how you decide the, the quarterback offseason. When Robert lands his helicopter out on the back, <laughs> the back practice field, and he's, out, he's out there watching... And Drake May is lighting it up, and Jacoby Brissett is, you know, throwing six-yard completions. O ownership, I think, is going to have input on, uh, hey, guys, if it's close, can we go with the kid? Because we want to put asses in the seats and be interesting. Like, I, I think there's an element of that. I've always thought there's an element of that. I thought they would draft a quarterback because of that. They did. And so, yeah, I think they're going to have input. What's Robin Glazer going to say, though? Uh, who knows? Way. That's a good point. She'll, she'll carry out whatever Robert wants. Right. Um, that being said, I mean, Elliot Wolf does have the job now, and it does seem like there's a plan that he has, and it was alluded to there by Mayo. So I think that whether or not Kraft helicopters in at the last second and says, okay, you're starting week one or week two or week three, there is sort of a process going on right now that's independent of that. Yeah. I right? mean, look, I, uh, I just think uh, I didn't love the pro ready line from Mayo. Otherwise, I do think the door is ajar, and it's questionable how high that bar is. Does he have to ball out? Does he have to uh, light it up in his words? Or does he just have to outperform Jacoby Brissett? Because I don't think you have to ball out and light it up to beat out Jacoby Brissett personally.